Sonora has won four players flicking discs across the desert to score the most points. Pandasaurus Games provided this in exchange for an honest review. I'm focusing on the multiplayer game, but there is a solo game against a bot. The general rules are mostly the same, though. Each player has a set of colored discs numbered 1 through 5. Player 1 begins with the orange Cliff Dweller ruins in front of them. Everyone else flicks from their closest corner. On your turn, flick any two view discs towards the scoring zone of your choice. There's an advanced rule that bans you from flicking into the nearest zone. I'll explain zones soon, but each has a name and animal. If your disc leaves the board, it's removed from the round unless you use a reflect bonus. If you knock an opponent's disc off the board, they immediately reflect it from their corner. Once you've gone, the next player flicks two discs. Continue until all discs have been flicked. One last thing. Discs that land on the bullseye in the middle are also removed, but the owner chooses how to resolve it during the next phase. Before you begin the right phase, you may spend a swap bonus to swap the position of one of your discs for another. When ready, resolve the Cliff Dweller runes first marked by the lizard. The player with the highest total value crosses off that many hexes on their score sheet. Divide your value among any hexes in the zone. There are lizard multipliers in the other zones, so don't forget about those when comparing values. The first player to complete a building gains the higher value and bonus. All future completions score the lower value. Before I continue, I want to point out the bonuses that can be unlocked in each zone. Fox, Owl, and Rabbit. When you gain one of these, you must resolve them either immediately or during that round's right phase. Draw a shape of 4 or lower in the canyon, make a path of 1 to 5 any length in the creek bed, or add 5 to your mud crack total. The sun icon is a special bonus. Discovery. You may choose any of the animal bonuses here. Cross out when used. In the canyon, draw shapes equal to or lower to the disc you're resolving. You must begin at the pre-drawn square and always be adjacent to a previously drawn shape. As you enclose cacti or discovery bonuses, mark them off on the tracker. Each disc is resolved individually here. Discs on a fox icon on the board count twice toward the canyon. In the creek bed, travel the full distance of each disc, counting each spot as one. Choose a direction at forks. When you end, circle the stopping location. Gain the bonus if there is one, otherwise gain the points during endgame scoring. You cannot go past the final spot in a path, and you cannot return in a direction. Like the canyon, each disc here is resolved individually, and discs on an owl icon count twice toward the creek bed. In the mud cracks, add your discs like you did in the Cliff Dweller Ruins. Beginning at the pre-drawn X, choose a path and mark off a node equal to or less than the total value. Once a triangle's three nodes are marked, gain the bonus or cactus, which will score a multiplier during endgame scoring. As you can imagine, you can trigger combos. Leftover values can be used toward the bonuses in the bottom right. Discs on a rabbit icon double their value toward the mud crack zone. At the end of 5, 6, or 7 rounds, depending on how long you wish to play, add up your scores in all 4 zones to see who won. Flick discs and maximize their values, the zones, and bonuses to score the most points. That's Sonora. Once you know Sonora, games take around 40 minutes with 3 or 4 players. Add 5 to 7 minutes for the long game, subtract that for the short game. This includes setup and takedown. There's no reading. Math is grade 3 at the most. More important is hand-eye coordination and the ability to shift plans on the fly. With that said, I think experienced gamers 8 and up could handle this if an older player joins them to help with scoring. The central area is small, though the player boards are pretty big and you'll want to make sure everyone has space to flick. Coffee tables for 2 and dining tables for 3 and 4. Player count usually doesn't affect gameplay for roll and rights. This is different thanks to the flicking. People can and will bump you, and the Cliff Dweller Ruins feature a race against others. I actually think this is best as a solo game because you get to choose the best group of flick discs from among three each round, giving you more choice. In our third game of Sonora, I had the perfect move. I had a token on the rabbit multiplier, plus one on the owl bonus. Both were going to help me trigger a huge combo. 
Then dad ruined everything with a single flick. I had to shift focus. I first hit the former owl token hard, sending it and my new token around and into the mud cracks. To punish dad, I sacrificed the token to knock his off the rabbit multiplier. Although I went a bit hard, costing me the position, he lost 8 points from it, making my decision worth it in the end. I racked up huge points and won. Sonora's board arena is nice and sturdy and keeps the tokens in most of the time. I like the corner angles. Once you are more skilled at the game, it's fun banking discs off of the sides. The discs are high quality, but similar colors can get lost in the art. Speaking of similar colors, why are two terrains almost exactly the same? It wouldn't have been a big deal if Pandasaurus provided stickers on the corners to remind you which area is which. I do like the different scoring areas. Some combinations work better than others, but thanks to the mitigation, early addition by the way, and bonuses, you're very rarely stuck on a turn. I like how many ways you can rack up points, rewarding clever choices, and skilled flicks. Let's talk about that mitigation. Your choices unlock your ability to mitigate. Being able to redo bad flicks or swap discs between zones is super helpful. If you create a bit of a safety net with some early moves, you can take more risks later. Again, very clever. The fact that player 1 always starts in the same spot is interesting. I wonder why they decided to do that. Speaking of player 1, there's a marker you pass around, but no place to indicate what round you're in. It's easy to forget how many rounds you've played once you're late in the game. Another simple thing missed. The original rulebook is very bad. Thankfully, an excellent replacement was posted on their website and BoardGameGeek. Use that instead. Neither rulebook has a scoreboard for solo plays. I don't actually know if my scores are good or not. This is rather surprising, especially since one and a half pages cover the solo game alone. Sonora is a flicking game with tactics, strategy, and replayability. It has a clever scoring system and bonuses, plus plenty of mitigation that are all tied to skill with a bit of luck. It has a fun solo mode that is my personal favorite way to play. I don't love this, and a lot of that has to do with the color and labeling issues. I also personally prefer rolling rights with a bit deeper strategy, such as Welcome 2, but this is a perfectly fine game that offers something significantly different than the many roll slash flipping rights on the market. That alone makes this at least worth a play.